In this video, you're going to learn to solve linear inequalities. So you've already been working with equations where we have, you know, a variable and we're trying to figure out, you know, what value we can place in the variable to make a true statement. So I've written a really simple equation for us here, x equals 2. So the value that we're going to need to make this a true statement or the solution to this equation is just going to be one value. Uh, we need to place a 2 in there for x so that we have the true statement 2 equals 2. If I was to graph this, it wouldn't be very exciting, but on the number line I could graph that solution. Here's 2, and the only value that's going to make this a true statement is 2 itself, so I would put a solid dot there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of transition from solving equations, things that have equal signs in them, over here now to inequalities. And inequalities, we're going to have these less than, less than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to signs in where typically where our equal sign would go. Okay? So here I have a statement x is greater than or equal to 2. So values that are going to make this a true statement, there's going to be many values that are going to make this a true statement. Uh, 2 obviously would make it a true statement because then we have the statement 2 is greater than or equal to 2. Well, that's a true statement. We can also put larger values than 2 to make this a true statement, like 3, 4, 5. We could put uh, decimal numbers in there, 2.45. That would be a true statement. We could put fractions in there, you know, 3 and 7 eighths. I'm just making up numbers. But anything basically that's larger than 2. So if I was to graph the solution set now, now we're no longer talking about one value as our solution. Now we're talking about a whole set of solutions. If I was to graph this on the number line, here's 2. 2 would be a solution, so I'd want to put a dot there. And I'd also want to indicate that anything greater than 2 is also a solution. So the way we do that is we just kind of shade this in. And we put an arrow there that says, you know, anything off to the right here on the number line is also going to be a solution to this inequality. Okay, so now we're dealing a little different than equations typically have one solution. Inequalities typically have a whole set of solutions. So, a couple ways to answer this question. Um, we can write it, the inequality like this and say x is greater than or equal to 2. That's pretty clear. We could also graph this on the number line. And there's another way that we use to indicate a solution set to an inequality, and that's called interval notation. So in mathematics, we're always interested in kind of coming up with the most efficient way of describing a situation. And so interval notation really makes a nice, quick, efficient way to describe a solution set to an inequality. And so let's take a look here. So what we want to do in this interval notation is we want to create this interval here. We're going to have two values in this interval. And in those values, I want to have kind of on the left side the smallest possible value that's a solution. And then over here on the right side, I want to kind of indicate the largest possible value that's a solution. And interval notation kind of mirrors the number line. Smallest on the left, largest on the right. So if I'm looking at this statement, x is greater than or equal to 2, the very smallest value or left-hand value in my interval is going to be 2. Now, the very largest value that could be a solution to this is, a, is infinity. I mean, this keeps going on. Any number that I can think of that's bigger than 2 is going to be a solution. So on the right side, I want to just have this infinity. So there's kind of my interval here to the solution set to this inequality. Is it starts at the lowest end, 2, and goes off to infinity. Now, I want to indicate in this interval that 2 is part of my solution set. Since x is greater than or equal to 2, we want to indicate that it's also part of the solution set. And so the way we do that, the notation that we use, is we just put a bracket around anything that's also included in the solution set. Now, infinity infinity's kind of a vague number, and we can't really put our finger on infinity. So we don't want to try to include infinity in our solution set. So if we want to show that we're not including something in a solution set, we use just a parentheses on there. And so here's the interval notation that describes the solution set to this inequality. At the smallest, it can be 2 equal to 2. At the largest, it can go all the way off to positive infinity. And again, since we can't really put our finger on infinity, we're not going to include that in our solution set. 
Uh, the reason that we have interval notation, you might be thinking, why? This is pretty simple. Why would we have this? As we move forward in mathematics, we're not going to go off to infinity. A lot of times we'll have these smaller intervals, like maybe we would be going from like 2 to 12 or 2 to 100 or something like that, and so we're going to want to indicate this little interval. And so now is a great time to start practicing this interval notation so that later on when we get to use this and we're looking at intervals, smaller intervals than ones that go off to infinity, we can just kind of indicate real quickly with this interval notation where these solutions or where these values fall. So when we go to solve linear inequalities, we solve them exactly the same way we solve equations, with one exception. And I'll get to that in just a second. But for right now, we're just going to solve this equation, or sorry, this linear inequality, the same way that we would an equation. So I'm looking at this uh, inequality here. I'm trying to get x all alone to isolate it. And once I isolate it, it's going to be easy to see what my solution set is. So I'd say, OK, first thing I would do is I would add 9 to both sides. And I would keep the inequality sign there. And let's take a look at what we have now on each side. On the left side, I'll have 6x. On the right side, I have 18. OK, we've simplified. Now just one last step to kind of isolate x. We would divide both sides by 6. And I'd say, OK, x is greater than 3. So what I want to do now is I want to indicate all of the values that are greater than 3. And so that's kind of a little bit tricky because you know, a value, obviously 4 is greater than 3. But 3 and a half is also greater than 3. And 3.001 is greater than 3. And 3.00000000001. So you can always think of a, a whole bunch of numbers. So what we want to do here is kind of get right up to 3, but not include 3. Because I can't put an answer of 3 because we can't say 3 is greater than 3. But anything even just a tiny bit bigger than that would be a solution to this inequality. And so what we do when we graph this on the number line is we say, OK, well, here's 3. We want to go values right up, but not including 3. So we want to get as close as we can to 3 without including it. And so the way we indicate that is we put an open circle around 3. And then anything that's bigger than 3 is going to be part of the solution set. So I would, again, shade this side and kind of go off now to positive infinity. So that's what it would look like on a number line. Anytime we have a greater than or a less than symbol, we use an open circle to indicate that we're going to get as close as we can without actually touching or, or using that 3 as part of our solution set. Now on interval notation, I would say, OK, 3 kind of going off to positive infinity. So on the low end of things, I would want to have 3. And then on the high end of things, I would want to have infinity. Now, I don't want to include the 3 here, so I would use a parenthesis, and that would indicate I'm getting as close as I can to 3 without using 3. And then again, we can't put our finger on infinity, so I would use a parenthesis on that one. Okay, I've written another inequality up here. Go ahead and pause your video player and work this problem, and when you get done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, so taking a look, again, we're trying to isolate x. So the first thing we want to do is subtract 7. So then we get 3x is less than negative 27. Then divide both sides by 3. Divide by 3. x is less than negative 9. So we want values right up to negative 9, and then everything smaller than that. So on our number line, it would look like this. Let's say here's 0, let's say here's negative 9. We don't want to include negative 9, so we would put an open circle. And then anything smaller than that. So going off to the left, anything smaller than that. So that would be kind of our answer on the number line. Now if we want to write that in interval notation, uh, the low side of things off to the left, well, we're going off to negative infinity there. So we would want to write negative infinity on kind of the low side of things. And then all the way up to negative 9, but we don't want to include negative 9, so I would put a parenthesis around that. Negative infinity is just like positive infinity. We can't really put our finger on that exact value, so we would use a parenthesis there to kind of indicate we're not including that value. OK, now let's take a look at that one exception I alluded to earlier. So here I have this inequality. Negative 2x is greater than 4. I want you to solve this. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this the way I solved all my other inequalities. I'm just going to isolate x. So what I would do is divide both sides by negative 2. And so then I get from my solution set there, x 
is greater than negative 2. All right, so x is greater than negative 2. Let's try one of these uh, values in our solution set out back in our original equation, or let's go ahead and check something here. So what we want to do is we want to check a value that's greater than negative 2 and make sure it works. Well, negative 1 is greater than negative 2. So let's go ahead and check negative 1 back in our original equation. So what that would look like then is negative 2 times negative 1 is greater than 4. Okay, so I'll take negative 2 times negative 1. That's going to give me a positive 2. And so I'd be left with a statement, 2 is greater than 4. Hmm, that's not true. So negative 1 can't be part of the solution set. Let's try another value. Okay, so it says x is greater than negative 2. Let's try a value larger than that. Let's try 0 in there. So let's check another one here. Let's check 0 in our equation here. Let's see. So I have negative 2 times 0 is greater than 4. And so negative 2 times 0 is going to give us 0. And so I have the statement 0 is greater than 4. Again, not a true statement. And so what happens in linear inequalities, we can solve them every single way that we do an equation with this one exception. If I multiply or divide both sides by a negative value, I have to flip the sign. Uh, another video coming on that on why we have to flip the sign. But for right now, let's just take a look. If we divide both sides by a negative number or multiply both sides by a negative number, we're going to have to go ahead and flip that sign. So let's take a look here. If I have right at this point now, instead of keeping the sign the way it was, I flipped that sign. So I notice, okay, I divide both sides by negative. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip that sign. So then I have x is less than negative 2, because I took that greater than sign, turned it around now to less than sign. Let's go ahead and look at some values that I would check there, and let's see if those work. So now I would be checking a value that's smaller than negative 2. Well, negative 3 is smaller than negative 2. Let's go ahead and check that. Let's check negative 3 in the original equation. So negative 2 times negative 3 is greater than 4. Well, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6, and so I get this answer, 6 is greater than 4. That is a true statement. And if I check other values that were smaller than negative 2, notice what's going to happen. I'm going to get a negative 2 times this negative value. Like if I took negative 2 times negative 4, that would give me positive 8. Well, that would be a true statement as well. And you'll see that it just can continue to and you'll see that it just continues to work and we'll keep getting solutions to this. And so anytime we multiply or divide both sides by a negative value, we have to flip that inequality sign, whether it's a greater than, less than, or the greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to signs.